the Bills. Get on back to answer some more goddamn questions. Today's questions, I think these are all older questions, actually, from a day or two above. Um, yeah, from weekend, but shit, I think everyone, yeah, they're all from goddamn order. So here the fuck we go. First one's from Chris Burton. Good day, Jay. I'm a new subscriber to your channel on YouTube. I'm not sure how questions are submitted. Submitted right here, brah, brah. <laughs> to your channel, so I'll ask here. I've been listening to metal since around 1987. Goddamn. Old fucking devil. Here in Australia. I know you've mentioned Destroyer 666, but what are your thoughts on the on the Aussie scene? Question mark. Pretty much answer that. I'm talking early 90s, disembowelments, anatomy, special warlust, sadistic execution, cruciform, abrevolin, paramess, macaum. Um, not even sure if I'm pronouncing that right. I recognize the name, but actually I don't think I've ever listened to them. Um, yeah, I guess I never went, I uh, actually talked about the 90s scene as far as, uh, Australia. I guess when you break it down, I never really thought about it. Uh, not a big fan, I guess. Um, so for me though, when I think of Australia, it's pretty much, yeah, late eighties, Hobbs, Angel of Death, Slaughter Lord, and then, well, nineties, Destroyer 666 and Anatomy, I thought was pretty good. Um, was it the Witches of Dathomir or the demos? Uh, don't love it, but it's it's good. I mean, I own a couple things. I think I own the maybe it's a discography disc. Uh, I remember when I first heard it, it was just the album. I don't think I own that. I think I only got repress with maybe the disc like uh, first album, maybe some demos or something. But uh, yeah, that that stuff's good. I don't love it, but it's it's good. Worth owning. And then bands like Sadistic Execution and shit, their style and their whole niche was fucking cool as hell. But again, they were just in the blast of me, Von and Voivod camp. Just one ear out the goddamn other. Like, just did nothing for me. Didn't, definitely didn't knock my socks off. Uh, but they were the, kind of one of the first, if probably uh, was the first band that's kind of started the whole thing with the uh, spelling words with X's and K's, at least in the metal scene. You know, that was cool. They had their own little shtick, cool-ass image, too. The guys themselves, how they looked. And inspired a lot of bands like uh, the the bands that I'm a big fan of, like Beast of Warlust and shit. I mean, uh, Beast of Mockery, Beast of Mockery from Sweden. Um, I know they're really inspired by uh, sadistic uh, sadistic execution. So it definitely inspired bands that I was into. They're, they're a band maybe I should go back and listen to, but I mean, I've listened to them a few times. You know, uh, the We Are Death, Fuck You, Met the Magus. There's the Chaos 1, Chaos 2. I mean, I'm fully familiar with the fucking band. Definitely not an out of loop clueless mofo. Um, but yeah, I just remember every time I listen to them, it's like, yeah, there's just nothing there. But I mean, the last time was well over 10 years ago since I spun it. But uh, so maybe maybe I should re rethrow something on the player. Um, Best of Warlust. Uh, again, I, I thought it was okay. But I mean, I heard them after Destroyer 666. And since KK Warslut was in. Uh, Best of Warlust just by default, whether for better or worse. I just kind of looked at it as like pre uh, Destroyer 666. It's not obviously what it is. It's a band prior to it. You just saw it to be in it. Um, and I was just like, I always liked Destroyer better. I just thought it had much better songs and shit. Now, don't get me wrong, as far as Extremity and uh, being just a primal, prim primitive band, uh, Best of Warlust, I would say, in a more extreme band, I would say Best of Warlust as the uh, Triple Six beat. But as far as just uh, own identity, uniqueness, and good songwriting, I think the Triple Six has some fucking beat, and that's who I prefer to listen to. Because as a matter of fact, which I do like very much, but if I had to pick a least favorite thing by uh, Destroyer 666, is actually the first album, Violence of the Prince, Violence of the Prince of This World. Uh, don't be wrong, it's a good, good record, but uh, it's still a little bit more, definitely more primitive and a little bit more just straight up black metal. Um, which is basically what Beast of Warlust was. So it almost still had that carried over to it. And ironically enough, that's the one I like the least. I think Unchained the Wolves Up is when they really start to get in the goddamn task. And um, so that, I mean, that was 90s, if you count that. But then if you go outside that, it seems like a lot of the bands that I thought were good were came out and started coming out in the fucking 2000s. Um, Again, unless some spilled over the 90s, like Gospel of Horns. They I'm trying to think when they started. The only thing I don't like by Gospel of Horns was their demo. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm correct. 
Gospel of Horns is another of those bands that are in the Napalm Death Camp where if you go by their demo, there's not a single original member. I even thought that the main front man fucking, uh, I believe you pronounce his name, Howitzer or whatever, uh, pretty much the balls of the band, or at least the, the image of the goddamn band. I always thought even he was on everything, but I, if I'm not mistaken, the very first demo they did, I used to have a, a CD of it. There was a CD pressing of it, and that probably is 90s. I was like, yeah, this doesn't sound like gospel at all. And I, I remember not, not thinking it sucked, but I was like, don't need it. Didn't think it was very good. And if I'm not mistaken, there's no original guys in there. I could be wrong, but I remember looking up, down, left, and right at it and be like, so there's no original members in this goddamn band from when they started. Um, and then, yeah, when is, uh, I, think, yeah, I think it's all two, early 2000s. I don't think any of those, uh, Eve of the Conquer and shit. I don't think any of that's, I think that's, what, 2000, 2001? So I think that'd be pretty much considered a 2000s band. Atomizer, same deal. Did they put anything out in the 90s? It is, it's late 90s. Um, so, yeah, you figure late, late 90s, early 2000s is when some of the other bands were coming along. Destructor, um, that I personally liked. So it's kind of like the whole, like when you think early 90s, 92 and shit. Uh, maybe, maybe some of the Armored Angel stuff. That's about all that's coming to my mind uh, that I did like. It seemed like uh, everything else was 80s. You know, like the Spectral Birth. Thank you, the Spectral Birth demos. Well, actually, Spectral Birth did that Raze demo, right? The second demo, which I still need to get the vinyl for that. I think that was 91, right? 91, 92. So I guess there's probably a few things that made it into the early 90s from Australia that I liked. But for the most part, yeah, there's not much, unless I'm completely forgetting about shit. There's, you know, like I said, some 80s and then the 2000s. Some of the stuff from Aussie that I that I personally cared about. Uh, Bob Lemiliax. I'm sure I'm pronouncing that goddamn wrong. Question for J-Dog. Ever asked Don the story of the, of the with the Nunslaughter McGow split, Alter the Dead? Question mark. No, what's there to ask? What's the story? Is there a story behind it? I picked up one from you guys when they were in stock, but never could find anything documenting its existence until recently. It says Lunch Slaughter tracks were recorded in 2017, but no info from the McGow side. They still active? Question mark. I have no idea. Think it's think it's any goo or canoe flipping material? Question mark. Always like their full length open season. To be honest, McGow is another band that Lunch Slaughter did a split with. That um, they're one of the very many bands that uh, <laughs> the other band on the other side. I was kind of like. Either I just didn't pay attention or don't know. I mean, there's exceptions to the rule that done splits with bands I care about. Seems like, to be honest with you, is most of the shit that I gave him the idea or told him about. Um, Hemorrhage, that was whose idea do you think that was? Me. Uh, Lurking Corpses, whose idea do you think that was? Me. Uh, fluids, whose idea do you think that was? Me. Um, non Slaughtered Blood, which those are still in stock. Uh, that was Big D's idea. Um... Was the use of that I like? Ramble Isles Key, Cyanide. Um, I'm just thinking of stuff about the bands that I like. Because most of it, yeah, a lot of the splits they've done is just, like I said, shit that I personally don't really care about. So, yeah, Megalis, I didn't. I, sure, I listened to B side, but I don't remember it, to be honest with you. Chad Ross, J Dog, an old, old head here, 54. Question Whatever happened to just. Good old ball busting in the scene. Shit, whatever happened to that just in the world, period. Used to be people could disagree on bands and bust on each other about it without getting an industrial sized case of butt hurt. Yep, yep, yep. Keep the YouTube videos coming. They make me my morning they make my morning before starting work. Glad I can be of help. Uh yeah, I don't know, dude. I don't know why is everybody a fucking pussy. Um uh, makes no goddamn sense to me. It's the funny thing is, is they're pissed that you disagree with them on whatever topic and that you're you have a different opinion but if you flip the goddamn switch and you like all the same shit and did all the same shit they'd be complaining about that man why is he copying off me like show the same stuff i do why can't he just be an individual they'd be bitching they'd be bitching that so it's like can't win with these fucking tool bags so brian bowman i got a question and comment for jadov why don't bands change their set list question mark uh yeah i'm not sure um, I guess my, my first thing that pops my mind is uh, kind of a matter of uh, 
I don't want to say laziness, but at the same time, kind of laziness. For example, I mean, you can only remember so many songs, so it depends on how many songs you know. Like, with fucking Cannibal, it's a lot of goddamn songs I remember. Like, what do you do? Like, three different set lists? I get tired of the same old shit. I hear you. I want to hear deep tracks at concerts. I'm glad you told Corpse Grinder about changing their set list. I told him, but I doubt he's going to fucking listen. In the interview you did with him. I'm going to see two shows of the Cannibal Corpse of Mayhem tour in Nashville and Knoxville. And also seeing the deceased in Nashville at the end of September. Thanks for doing videos every day. Keep up the good work. Yeah, and in a band's like Cannibal's case, personally, what I would do if I was them. Um, and again, maybe it's easier said than done. But at the same fucking time, I don't know. I mean, this is what they do for a living. So it's kind of like, cut the shit. You know what I mean? I mean, you don't need to change the entire fucking set list. I, I, I get, you know, say they're doing, how many songs are they doing? 20 a night? Remembering 60 songs or so would be fucking a little bit of a tough task. So expecting a different set list each night, I can, I can understand playing an entire same set list per tour. However, per tour, they should change it up. That's what I would do. Because theoretically, for the next few years, a lot of the same fans, yeah, you're always going to get new fans at every single show. But, I mean, year after year after year, you got guys like myself, they've seen you, and it's like you're playing all the same songs with the exception of, oh, now we got a few off our new album. But the back catalog is all the same songs for the most part. I mean, they switch it up here and there. It's kind of like, and their their logic is, and they kind of said this, and so did Matt Harvey in the Exhumed interview, and, and I get it. But at the same time, what I don't get is like this. They're trying to uh, cater to new fans and advertise the new album. Okay, well, there you go. You just said the new fucking fans. Number one, chances of them, especially the new, new fans, they may not even own any album. So no matter what songs you play, they're not like, oh, that's new album. I'm specifically buying that. They don't even gonna know. They're either going to, do I like this band or not, on a first time listen. Or, okay, cater to the new album. That's, you know, it's a new fan. They, pick, they probably picked up the new album. Maybe they'll work their way back. In that case... They don't know any of the old songs. So it makes zero fucking difference which ones will you play. So, having said that, their opinion's kind of fucking irrelevant. You got your new songs in to advertise the new guy. Fine. What about all the guys that have been coming for the last 10 plus years that have been seeing you time and time again? Just doing the same exact set list, that's a little bit of the middle finger to you. You know what I mean? Like, hey, don't give a shit what you guys think. Thanks for your fucking $30 ticket price and let's get the hell out of here. Let's phone this one in. Not saying they're doing that or they're thinking that, but it, it could come across that when you've seen them 10 years in a row. And it's like, you've done all the same songs. Like, for example, Butchered Up Earth. It's always gutted or covered with source every single time. As a matter of fact, I don't think I've ever seen Cannibal do anything other than those two songs. I've never seen them when they play Meat Hook Sodomy. Now, if they see this, which they won't because they don't watch my shit. But if they did, and they're like, we play Meat Hook Sodomy. Yeah, you did in like 92, 93, 94. Then, that was over 30 years ago. Have these fucking idiots come to your shows when you're alive? So it's like, yes, I'm not saying you never have. I'm well aware of you have. Uh, the dog owns tons of Buddha LPs, so he knows your goddamn set list from all the years. I own shit from fucking 19, I think every year they've ever played. I think every single tour I might own a boot from. Well, maybe not some of the later ones. There was no boots that came out, but first four albums for sure. Well, even Vile. I own, I own, I own definitely at least one from Vile, maybe two. Yeah, two boot recordings. I don't know if there's anything from Gallery Suicide out. Bloodthirst, there's live cannibalism, so there's an official release. War Obsessed, I'm not sure. If, I can't remember off the top of my head. I know there's definitely something from uh, Wretched Spawn here. But a lot of them. So I, I have a pretty good idea what kind of goddamn set list they're doing. I saw, first time I saw Cannibal was in 2000. I'm almost pot and, and seen them however many times since then. But that was the first time. So for the last 23 years, I've been seeing them. I'm just going off Bush Earth. I've never seen them do goddamn meat hook. Uh, fucking uh, the title track, Bush of Earth. I've never seen them do that. Bomb at the Soul. I've never seen them do that. Why just do cover, gutted and covered with sores? I mean, they, there's other great songs in there. Dude, just switch. Just pull gutted and covered with sores and do one or two others. If you want to do two songs, if you can only do one song on Butcher, dude, pick one or pick the title track. Pick meat hooks on me. Pick one of them. You know what I mean? That you haven't done. Eating back to life. They've always do skull full of maggots. I would just pull it at this fucking point. Um, 
want to do another one of the guys, you know, like I told Corsica, you want to do more of a kind of a sing-along one? Why not Mangled? It's got the fucking dual vocals on that one, too. If they want to go for that, then you, you, there's there's that. Um, Tomb of the Mutilated, I mean, yeah, you even said, and I, and I understand it from a, you know, nostalgic point of view and, you know, kind of like the most notable death metal song or recognizable death metal song ever recorded, popularity-wise, Hammer Smash Face. Uh, George Plank really told me that that shit song's untouchable. I'll never leave a set list. And I, and I get it. I totally understand that. And I already assumed that to be the case. So you're automatically getting that, but then they always do I Come Blood, which is a banger of a banger. But why not take that off and fucking do uh, Necropedophile or fucking uh, Intrails Rip from a Virgin's Cunts, Post Mortal Ejaculation. I have seen them do, I think it was on the Torture Tour, they did Addicted to Vaginal Skin. That was cool. Uh, bleeding, pretty much they're keeping the same songs in there. I, it seemed like they, sw- in all my years, it seemed like they swapped the most songs on that one. Bile, they fucked that. It's constantly devoured by vermin, which don't get me wrong. It's a great fucking song, but, uh, I think every single time I've seen them, they've done devoured by vermin and, and they might've done like the, the, on the bloodthirst tour, they might've done a, one or two others, maybe perverse suffering. I can't remember if they did it. I know they did on the, on the, on the vile tour. I know they did it. The recordings I have, uh, but at this point, yeah, fucking take that out and uh, take take the power of vermin out and put, put in monolith or yeah, perverse suffering or orgasm to torture or something like that. Um, that's what I would do. But are they going to? Probably not. Harry Quinn, J Dog, how do you rank the Tish's Witches Coven within their catalog? Question mark. It's their best song, but I can imagine you saying the sick riff, which kicks in towards the middle of the song, being too slow. No, I, and again, I, guys, I like slow parts and slow music. As a matter of fact, I was just listening to uh, on the car ride to Pittsburgh, that interview you saw by now with uh, Kate from Hyrax. I was listening to, again, uh, Gormans. Um, it's a compilation CD where it has everything on there. The one that Necroharmonic did, that's what I own by them. Where it's the full-length album, the two demos, and the 7-inch. And then it's got the bonus track that they never released at the very, very end. Said I've been in some pure fucking uh, headbanging mania. That album as a whole is a fucking... Uh, is a, a slow album. And as a matter of fact, as far as the album, because the, the, uh, the first demo, Human Relic demo, is definitely my favorite thing by them, especially those goddamn nasty-ass vocals. Um, you can tell they're very influenced by Carcass. And speaking of that, what is with the fucking, uh, the, a lot of the Swedish bands, like, like starting off, like, loving Carcass and trying to play Carcass style and the vocal tones and shit like that, and then they completely change. It's like, I, I, again, I, like again, Carnage was another one. Listen to the first fucking Carnage demo. Dude. It literally sounds like Carcass. First Gorman demo. You can tell they're going for fucking Carcass. Uh, there's a few others. Who am I drawing a blank? Who else did it? Uh, they start off as like a total like Carcass wannabe band, or very highly influenced by them. You did their album. Like, what is this? It's like I strongly get the vibe. To just use bands like Carnage and fucking uh, and uh, Gorman. So let's just use them as examples. We're not saying that, but when I see that shit. I, I, I honestly get the vibe that the guys themselves from day one are kind of fucking posers. The true definition of posers, not they listen to fucking Pantera, because that's not a fucking poser. A poser is popping off your butts, pretending to be something you're not. The harder you figure they're posers, J-Dog. <clears throat> Do the fucking math, man. When they're doing their demos and shit, it's a year or two after, like, Kark, they probably heard Symphonies of Sickness. They get it, this is the greatest thing, let's fucking put this out. And then, a year or two in, what's coming out? And tuned in their goddamn left-hand path comes out. It's got these, it's in their own homeland. Then there's Dismember. Then there's Grave. There's all those in there. That's blown up and getting popular. Oh, man, all our buds and all our comrades, they're putting out this Swedish sound. And this is what's kind of expected. Let's put this out. And in Gorman's case, Carnage didn't make it. I mean, but you saw what Michael Lamont went on to go fucking do with Arch Enemy later on. But look at Gorman. That bonus track was a profound harmony or whatever the hell it's called. I think that's the name of the song, maybe. Could be wrong. But it's like an unreleased song, right? And I actually do like the song. But you could tell right then and then, if they did a full-length album of that stuff, you're like, that would be the cutoff. You're like, and there's a lot of people that wouldn't even like that. They would, the, the direction that they're going, look at what it was. It was more commercialized. It was more that death and rock, just like desultory bitterness and all these fucking bands that were 
you know, you got the Arch Enemies, the Carcass Heartworks, just like that. Some more radio-friendly sound. Again, some of those I like. But you can tell, at best, if Gorman did another album, that would be the last one I liked. And you're guaranteed, you could just put the entire fucking farm on it on Vegas Bet, that the next album would be complete and total, utter, goddamn commercial dog shit. Look at Desultory. You knew you just knew, granted, I wasn't I wasn't buying records at the time, it was 1992 when Betterness came out. But I would have known for a fact when I bought that, oh, this is the beginning and the end. This is definitely the last good release they did. I like this one and it's wimpier, but you know the next one's gonna suck. Sure as sure as shit. What happens? They put out Swallow the Snake, aka Swallow the Dick. It sucked ass. And again, I you, you just know these guys are fucking posers, dude. Why they're going with the fucking times? First album, Pure Swedish Death Metal. When it's in the boom, they hate the very 91, 92. The very next year, music's getting a little more commercial. They jump on that train. The following year, all this commercial fucking death and rock, death roll fucking bullshit with Entombed and Carcass, Therian, whatever the fuck they were doing. All this sellout garbage, they jump on that train. Then what do they do? 2008 or something. Swedish Death Metal's cool again, bro. But now it's it. We're we're back, and we're putting out shit that sounds like the Crown or whatever, or their first record, like it's more you know Swedish death metal, which was, was fine. The two comeback albums were fine, but a part of it was that I I was a little salty in the back of my just, you know bad taste in my mouth. For them, it's like, dude, these guys are full blown fucking posers, man. They they have to be. Just look at their fucking catalog. And again, like I said, not the first album's amazing. Demos are great, and I even like bitter. So it's not like I'm not taking anything for. Credit's given what credit's due. But the guys themselves, I'm sorry, those are, you guys talking about posers this, posers that. It's kind of guys like that that are fucking posers. Kirkus, same thing. Fucking posers, dude. Therian, posers. Sam L, posers. Do I need to go down the list? When you, especially do the math, when you see their actual release catalog, look what year it came out and how they changed. It's kind of like you can spot these fucking buffoons a goddamn mile away. That's why I have a lot more respect for bands like Dismember and shit like that. They have me. You better. Like, what about massive killing capacity? It is a little more commercial. Maybe they're slightly trying to play with it, but for starters, it's still a good goddamn record. And secondly, they kind of went back to what they were doing right after. Uh, that one's just a little bit more, I guess, watered down and melodic. I think it's a great record, but I can see the argument on that. But the rest is all pretty goddamn consistent. Even after that, they weren't jumping around. Trend to trend to trend to trend to trend to trend. Probably why they fucking started the goddamn song Trend Killer on the following album, Death Metal. Probably has something to goddamn do with it. Hell, maybe I'll ask fucking Maddie Karki of goddamn, uh, and if I get that interview at MDF, goddamn it. So let Maddie Karki goddamn know I'm, I'm the dogs coming for him in Maryland. I'm just going to replace, planning on doing an interview. He's the number one person I want to fucking get. Side fucking Louise Moe of Hembridge. That's my bucket list. That's why the dog's going to MDF. So if he comes back from MDF with no Luisma interview, a Matty Karki no interview, dog's fucking pissed. And that ain't asking much. That's just two. Better get more than that, goddammit. But I'm just saying, min min minimally those two is what I fucking want. That's the main fucking reason I'm going to the goddamn fest. Maybe I'll ask him about that. Or just kind of somewhat bring it up. It's like, yeah, dude, did you ever notice your home line, man? It's kind of fucking, a lot of your comrades, a lot of your fucking bands you're in cahoots with. Correct me if I'm wrong, but honestly, dude, kind of a bunch of fucking posers. So the way I kind of see it, again, it's some of the bands of which I fucking like. So I'm saying it right now. Guys in Gorman, correct me if I'm incorrect, but kind of sounds fucking posers. Maybe not desultory as fucking bad posers of them. At least they knew when the goddamn pulled the plug, Gorman. Credit there. So never officially made it to the shit list. Mark my words, though. If they were to continue on, they would have made it to the goddamn shit list. So... Well, then what the fuck do you think? And comments, questions, or anything else? You don't got to put it there later, goddammit.